It really seems like the DC Universe could fall apart at any moment, whether it's the Flashpoint Paradox, all the heroes dying, or a big baddie coming back to end everything. We're going to cover it all on today's Top 10 Nerd List. Coming in number 10, we have another Flashpoint. This seems like the most common way that the DC Universe could end. It doesn't matter how many times the speedster runs as fast as he can, he can never run fast enough to change the world for the better. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the Flashpoint is when the Flash runs so fast he goes back in time to reset things. The most famous version of this is when he runs back in time to stop his mom from being killed when he was a kid and comes back to the present day to find that everything has fallen out of control. Bruce Wayne is dead, Thomas Wayne is Batman, Martha Wayne is the Joker, Atlantis and Themyscira are fighting over Earth in the biggest war that the world has ever seen, and Superman is a withered cower in a bunker that can barely talk. I hate to say it, but things were better the other way around, Barry. So Barry Allen has to run back back in time at the end of this to reset everything so it can return to the way it was. Now we do see the Flash pull off this move again in the Justice League Dark Universe, which I love. The Flash runs back through time to reset the world after the League just defeated Darkseid. Because even though the heroes defeated the big baddie, half of them are dead and the other half are either insane, traumatized, or 50% robot. So will we see a Flashpoint where things go very wrong and time itself is ripped apart and everything ceases to exist? Uh, maybe. Coming at number 9, we have Superman goes loco. This has been the backbone of a lot of comics. Superman is so powerful that his presence can basically be the backbone of how an entire series will play out. If he's there, the day is saved. If he's not, everyone dies. We have seen this so many times in the DC universe that I am honestly impressed by how the writers are able to find new and interesting ways to keep using Superman's unbeatable powers. But what would happen if the boy in blue lost his mind? I'm not talking about like going crazy like he does in the Injustice games, where you you can kind of see his point of view, but he's still really ruthless. I'm talking about he just wants to murder. If Superman went truly insane, like homicidal rage insane, then we could see him just fly from planet to planet and start blowing them up. And who's going to stop him? It would take a very powerful team of magic users and a back catalog of kryptonite to take him out. Actually, that's a comic I would really like to read. A super magic team put together to kill an insane Superman that's flying through the space trying to kill everything? Someone get DC Comics on the phone, we got a winner. Coming at number 8, we have Just Too Old. Some of you watching are going to be huge fans of the DC Animated Universe, and why wouldn't you be? It's absolutely amazing. You might remember the episode where the whole league gets turned into kids, a trope that we have seen in comics again and again, along with other media. In this episode, the powerful magic user Mordred blasts out a spell that sends any adult to another world so he can be the ruler of Earth with all the other kids that he wants to be around. This means that the league is trapped in an alternate dimension with everyone that's over the age of 13. This is why the League gets turned into children so they can come back to Earth and then fight Mordred. But if the League lost that fight that would have been the end of the universe as eventually everyone except for Mordred, who has been blessed with eternal youth, would have aged out and been banished away. Next on the list we have Poison Ivy has had enough. It's no secret that Poison Ivy doesn't really have a soft spot for anything living and breathing unless it's green and has petals. She's a wook in the truest sense of the word. To her every nature looks lover is just a poser. So if she got the chance, she would probably erase all non-plant life on the planet so everything could be green. What would this mean for people? Well, everyone would probably be turned into plant people, similar to her, or they would just be killed. I don't know how bad she wants company. There's a story arc called Queen Ivy where she becomes fed up with humanity once again and decides that she is going to rebrand herself as Queen Ivy, and she sends her roots into the foundation of Gotham to tear it down. With a lot of the DC heroes not seeing Ivy as a threat currently as she has been going through a anti-hero phase. She might be able to pull a fast one on all the soups and get the flora paradise that she has always wanted. Next on the list we have the Crime Syndicate Returns. The Crime Syndicate has been used again and again in the DC Universe and I truly love them. I know that this is an old trope not only in comics but pretty much everywhere. I mean we can fly back in time to evil Spock who was repping that goatee. I think that's when the goatee became a symbol of villainy. But even though this trope is tired and old, having heroes face off against their evil counterparts is so fun, because you usually get to see how heroes would beat each other if they ever fought, and if they didn't have to hold back. And the crime syndicate comes with some cool variations to the Justice League, like how Superwoman has a lasso of submission, and Ultraman has to feed on Kryptonite to get powers and is weakened by the sun. But when we see this team of terror rip through a wormhole in the New 52, they nearly take out the entire League by trapping them inside Firestorm, which would have caused him to 
explode if they weren't eventually freed. But if the Syndicate had their way, the DC Universe would have been destroyed before the New 52 ever got its footing. Next on the list, we have Monarch 2001. Some of you will remember the comic run from the early 90s called Armageddon 2001. This showcased a future date that is not far from our own. The comic took place in the year 2030 and the world was dystopian because everything had been destroyed by a new all-powerful villain who had seemed to dismantle and destroy the Justice League. His name was Monarch, and the reason that the comic was called Armageddon 2001 was because that was the year that the Monarch decided that he was going to rise to power and take over the world. Pretty dark if you ask me. The heroes weren't able to stop him and he was able to bring an end to everything that they knew and loved. Could a return of Monarch mark the end of the DC Universe? Next on the list we have Brainiac finally succeeds. See I like Brainiac, I think he's a cool villain, he's one of the only dudes that's been able to take on Superman and he's probably the smartest being in the universe, if not he's definitely up there. But his motivations are just so boring, he goes from planet to planet and puts each one of them in a little jar so he can keep all their data and he can just keep learning, like that is the nerdiest way to be an evil doer. He's evil because he wants everything to be organized, maybe the dude just has OCD. But he could for sure bring the end of the DC Universe, if he was ever able to get past the Justice League he would keep bottling up the universe until nothing was left, and with each passing planet he would be getting more and more powerful. Next on the list we got all the top dogs are gone. There is no debate about who is at the top of the ladder when it comes to the Justice League. Well in the comic Justice League of America Destiny we get to see what it would look like if the Dark Knight and the Man of Steel were never there to help out, and it looks like the rest of the members can't keep up with the world falling apart. So if we were to see something happen that would cause Superman and Batman to disappear that might bring the end of the DC Universe and it would really hurt DC's stock price. Next on the list we have Trigon Controls Darkseed. If you haven't seen the movie Justice League Dark Apocalypse, just know that I'm about to hit you with some spoilers for that movie so if you're worried about them you might want to skip past this point. I highly recommend watching that movie because it is amazing, but in it you have Darkseed succeed in taking out the Justice League and then he takes over the world and continues to dominate the universe. Superman is left powerless and years Years later, a slapdash team of surviving heroes is put together to try and take out Darkseid. While this assault on Apocalypse is taking place, Trigon escapes from Raven's mind and he takes over Superman's body. This Trigon Superman fusion fights Darkseid and kind of whoops his butt. This ends with Superman pushing Trigon out of his body, but Trigon later materializes in his own form and starts duking out with Darkseid, and the two of them are sucked into a boom tube that in theory killed them, but they were probably just floating around in another dimension. Now this universe is is restarted at the end of the movie because everyone is jacked up and the world is a mess. But if Trigon and Darkseid ended up in another universe and Trigon defeats Darkseid, he could take control of his body like he did Superman, and then you have a Trigon Darkseid combo that could probably kill everything. And coming in at the number one spot we have Dr. Manhattan says so. I mean, do I really need to get into too much detail about this? He might be the most powerful being in the DC universe. In a way, he is a god. If there's anyone watching who doesn't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a brief breakdown on this cosmic force. In the comic book The Watchmen, we are introduced to Dr. Manhattan, who was just a man until an accident ripped his atoms apart. And since then, he has the power to bend matter to his will and even shape it as he sees fit. He could create life. He could destroy destroy life. There's a comic arc where he actually is the person who made the entire DC universe. He is living energy, immortal, a god of gods. He could even turn Superman into a bed of flowers. He's not really good or evil, he just is. And if he wanted to, because he thought things needed to change, or because he was just bored, he could erase and rewrite the entire universe faster than the Flash. And that would be no guesswork, it would all be with precision. Alright guys, that has been our list. I have been your host Chad Arena, and we'll see you on the next list. Bye. And comes back to the present day to find that now do now we do see now we do see the Flash pull off this move. Actually, actually a comic. Actually, in this episode, the powerful magic user Mord Mordred Mordred. The comic took place in the year 2030, and the world was a dystopian. The world was was dystopian. You might be able to pull a fast one on all the soups and pull off this floor. Uh, so if, so if we see, so if we see, uh,